Hello, hi, hope you are well and doing great. In this video, we are going to talk about seven standards of textuality. Earlier, we have talked about what is textuality, what are the three basic domains of textuality and what are different aims of textuality. And now we will discuss how we can achieve those aims of textuality or how we can achieve those three basic domains of textuality. We can achieve all those by meeting seven standards of textuality as defined by Bugran and Dressler. If you just look at this, Bugran and Dressler in their book, Introduction to Text Linguistic. Okay, let us start. A text is more than the bare listing of words in a row or adding of various sentences randomly to each other. As we always think that it is in, the text is not a simple thing or we have just put in the words randomly without thinking. But the case is that we uh, very critically think we think what we are writing on the page because um, all the words need to have a proper connection and they have to make sense to the reader or they have to make sense to the listener. The knowledge of what components are included in a text and in which way these components interact with each other is a key in truly understanding a text as well as it is essential for being able to fully receive its message. A receiver whether it be a reader, whether it be a listener, if he or she does not uh, understand the text or um, he gets shocked after listening what the other person is saying because he has randomly jotted down the words or he has randomly spoken the words, then it would be tough for the, her or him to understand that text. So it is really important to meet some standards of textuality so our text can convey what the reader or what the speaker or writer wants to convey. A text will be fully understood and received as intended if it meets seven standards of textuality as defined by or as given by Bugran and Dressler in the book Introduction to Text Linguistics. Now, basically, I have already talked about textuality, so I would not uh, talk much in detail about it, but just uh, defining how uh, Bugran and Dressler defined it. Textuality is the complex set of features that text must have to be considered text. In order to define a text, or in order to uh, truly call any text as text, it must have certain features, and those features are called seven standards of textuality, and uh, it should meet certain social and communicative constraints as well. Other than that, the basic and the most simple definition of textuality is that uh, what makes a text unified as a whole, unified, uh, uh, what makes the text as coherent and cohesive. So we can make all, uh, we can make our text textual by meeting seven standards. And what are those? Starting with the first standard, and that is cohesion. We have already talked about cohesion and coherence and the sources of cohesion and coherence. And I'm not going to talk about those in detail because it would prolong our video. So just simply explaining, it is a text-centered term. First of all, this text-centered term that is related to the way how the text components that are present at the surface. Surface text, for example, references there. We have used ellipses. Uh, then we have used conjunctions. How, how these things work together in order to make our text cohesive. Other than that, it deals with the lexical and grammatical relationship between different elements of the text that hold it together. It is basically divided into two types in which we have grammatical cohesion and lexical cohesion, but grammatical cohesion is further divided into reference, then we have substitution, then we have ellipses. In lexical cohesion, we have lexical items and the conjunction is at the borderline between these two. We have already formed a video on this, uh, on these sources or devices of cohesion and you can watch that. Now, uh, just give you, give, uh, give you an example example, they told me you had gone by her car. So over here, we have used certain references, whether that, that reference could be any pronoun or a pro, 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 pro form, or you could say any pro modifier as well. So over here in this example, you could see we have used certain cohesive devices. And there, this is just one example. Other than, There is another example here. Here are 13 cards. Take any three. Now give me any three. 
cards now if you just see i have dropped certain words and again we can make our text cohesive by dropping certain words and in order to avoid repetition and this device cohesive device is called ellipses and there are other as well and you can understand those by watching our video on sources of our devices of cohesion now talking about coherence the second text centered criterion is the coherence of the text it is again text center why i'm saying because the uh, upcoming uh, standards of textuality would be user centered this describes the way in a way a text may sense to the readers and writers through the relevance and accessibility of configuration of concept ideas and theories how do we present our ideas concepts and theories and how they, they do they make sense to the reader whether they make sense to the reader or not and some of its characteristics are it requires semantic unity it should make sense and concept of coherence is not related to language it is more related to people people have to understand for example if you have just used the uh, structure that is correct according to any language for example in english we have used subject verb object but it is tough for the people to understand that uh, uh, it is uh, tough for the people to make sense of that structure then it would then that text wouldn't be considered coherent it includes causal links reference relationship as well as temporal relationships we have already talked about in our one of the previous video and you can watch that jack fell down and broke his leg no both structurally and semantically it is correct because it is making sense as well jack broke his leg and fell down so it seems incorrect structurally it is fine but semantically because it is not making sense to the reader so it would be tough for the reader to digest these sentences jack broke his leg and fell down so that text wouldn't be coherent intentionality this is the user centered criterion Be uh, previously we have talked about cohesion and coherence and the, those were text centered now this is user centered and it is more related to text producers attitude because the, we also have to look to the intentions of the text producer what are his intention what are intentions what are his ideologies what are his uh, uh, what actually he wants to or she wants to convey to the um, reader there must be some intention in his mind and after that whether he is fulfilling that intention by producing a coherent and cohesive text we have to see those uh, these two things that the set of utterances should constitute a coherent and cohesive text instrumental in fulfilling the producer's intention that is to distribute knowledge or to attain a goal specified in a plan i think so you have got the idea what is intentionality for example i will help you should have the intention of help the author is saying i will help you and he must have the intention of help other than that he needs to produce sentence that is uh, uh, cohesive and coherent but now I'm going to give you another example of a sentence that is not cohesive and coherent but we will look into more detail the distance between the vehicles in front of me was quite big it might have been now he has used full stop 30 meters comma because it was already dark in the first example sentence is both coherent and cohesive but in the next this text is not cohesive and coherent but still the goal that the speaker uh, the intentions the purpose that is present in the mind of the sayer as to give information and so that information he is trying to give that information and he wa wants to be as much correct as he or she can so here over here in this text intentionality or the standard of intentionality is achieved or you could say it is met the next one is acceptability now first one was intentionality was at the speakers or at the sayers or at the writers and acceptability as at the uh, readers end or is at the listeners end who is receiving the information it is again user center criterion text recipients intention to expect a cohesive and coherent text when he has expected then he must have the intention to accept that text or in order to dig the meanings of that text and to not take it uh, simply or just pass it away he need to understand the text and he he or she must show some willingness to understand the text consequently the individual knowledge of the receiver has to be ordered added in order to build the coherence for example i will help you he must understand that the other person is uh, will help me in the 
future. The distance between the vehicles in front of me was quite big. Again, taking the same example, in the first example, sentence is both coherent and cohesive, but in the second, it is not. But it depends on the recipient of the text who must show willingness to understand that the receiver must understand if it is not grammatically correct as well as have knowledge and he needs to or she needs to have some understanding of road transportation in order to understand the core message of the text for example if you just passing on the road and you uh, met an accident or you just saw an accident and you are trying to explain to someone who is alive then it would be tough for uh, and you are not a, a native speaker of english then it would be tough for the listener to understand but if you are explaining this to any traffic warden then it, even if you are not a native speaker then he would get the glimpse or he would get the cracks what you want to say from your utterances whether your sentences are grammatically correct or not next is informativity the fifth standard of textuality concerns the extent to which the occurrences of the presented text are expected or unexpected whether we are just so talking about those things that have been uh, uh, talked earlier are the, on which number of articles are present. So this deals with expected or unexpected, something known or unknown. Furthermore, Bue, Gran and Dressler explain that each text is somehow informative means there must be uh, why because we are not only um, if just we say that we are dealing with any current affair, we are giving information about any po political situation in any country. Other than that, if it is same, but other than that, we are also referring to our ideology, our point of view, our cultural context. What is my perception? And what is my belief it is also reflected through that text as well so uh, now over here the, the the text are you could say the sentences to which i have referred they are somewhat unexpected and uh, they have are arranged in such a way that would uh, let you think the sea is water the sea is water uh, even we know that uh, the sea is full of water but we have we ever tried to expect such a, a sentence the sea is water we get shocked him who disobeys me disobeys paradise lost now if uh, Ezra Pound said that um, criticized and ridiculed uh, uh, Milton or on using such type of verses why because uh, she says that Milton has tried to break the usual patterns of language um, and over here he has done that him who disobeys me disobeys and he has broken those patterns in order to catch the atten attention of the reader him who disobeys and him who was capitalized who disobeys comma me disobeys so such structures are somewhat like unexpected are for the reader it's not only structurally but also um, semantically that is why readers get interested or they get intrigued to know about these structures situationality the sixth standard of textuality is situation then because we have to put our text into a particular situation if we aren't doing that then we could be uh, considered as talking like nonsense if you are going on the road and it's written as reduced speed now there are certain implications of that for example if you are in the home and it's written that reduced that is nonsense but if you are passing on the road and it's written that reduced speed this means then there are what could be those implications for example there is a population ahead there could be a school hospital ahead or there is a shop turn ahead so likewise intertextuality and the last standard of textuality is intertextuality in which we add another text or we add uh, uh, references of other texts into our text in order to uh, make our text more creative or in order to refer to other texts in which the things that we are quoting are already referred and uh, we could uh, do this such as by quoting by illusion cock plagiarism pastish parody or by interconnections between this term was actually introduced by julia kristeva and uh, now if we just look at this the main plot line of disney's the lion king this is an animated movie and two famous movie is is a take on shakespeare's hamlet it is taken from shakespeare's hamlet and uh, the same plot line is forward in lion king this is intertextual the wasteland of t.s Eliot is also Eliot is also full of references of other works and uh, i think so now you have understood what is textuality and what are different standards of textuality if you have any question or query you can type in the comment box but for that you have to like and subscribe our channel 
थैंक यू सो मच